Yo, what's going on guys? Not your average noob here and welcome to today's video where we're going to be discussing all of Spawn PK's unique pets in the form of a tier list. This video is actually going to be a double hitter as it's going to be very informative as to finding out the abilities of every pet in the game, but it's also going to be useful in the sense that an experienced PKer is going to be expressing his opinion as to which pets are considered to be good or bad. There's honestly a lot of details and conditions that can be nitpicked on this topic alone, however I'm going to cut the chit chat and just jump straight into it, but if you guys find this video really interesting Enjoyable, please show me some love in the comment section below as I'm going to be putting in a lot of work on this video and without further ado let's get this party started. Alright so here we are with the pet tier list we finally got it all created some of the images are going to look a little bit interesting but I'm gonna go ahead and start doing this obviously S is going to be the highest tier and highest quality meaning the best thing in the game A is going to be pretty much second to best and then obviously F is going to be the worst and you guys can fill in the blanks from there Ah oh, man this is going to be really interesting and exciting to do alright so we'll start out with the alien pet this pet basically allows you to teleport out of the wilderness at any level rather than than just level 20 and under or 30 and under if you have a 30 wilderness source this pet is extremely overpowered considering you can drop the pet and teleport out at any given moment as long as you are not tb it does not bypass tb i can't tell you how many times i've gone up to pvmers or even pkers that are afraid of me and then you go up to attack them and they just instantly drop an alien and they're gone they're completely safe and there's no real counter to it other than tbing them or using a scotizo pet Honestly, I'm going to go ahead and place an alien pet around the A tier, to be honest with you. It's really useful, and it doesn't really have too many downsides, but it's obviously not going to be S just yet. So alien pet, definitely putting you there. So we have the Ancient Guardian pet here. This is going to grant you a 33% chance for your attacks to bypass defense migration. Basically that only means like Divine, Minimi pet variants, Dens, Bulwark, etc. Anything with crazy damage soaking kind of capability. It's not the greatest pet in the world, but it's also not the worst pet in the world. I definitely would probably put it more so in the D category only because of the fact that there's not many uses to this pet other than that specific thing. Ancient Berserker pet's basically going to be the Ancient Guardian pet as well, but also the 10% strength. Nothing too crazy about this one, but it is a step better than the Ancient Guardian pet, and I've actually had some pretty decent results out of this thing. Definitely going into C category, but nothing too great like a B or plus. The Arcane Demon pet, this thing's actually going to increase Godspell damage by 25%, and it also boosts your magic token drops in Mage Arena by plus 3. It's pretty up there with the Unholy and Divine Hawk, which we're going to talk about later. I'm going to have to go ahead and throw this probably in the B category because there's not too many uses outside of the magic. I really want to push it towards A, but it's not the same as the Hawks and stuff like that, and I guarantee you more pets are going to be more in the A category rather than the Arcane Demon, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in the B slot. Oh man, dude, the Archaic Worm pet's absolutely insane. It's going to be a Bone Guard pet and the Blood Worm pet combined. So this pet's literally going to grant you an extra chance at PvP statue drops. It doubles your chances for statue drops. You have a rare chance at PvP treasures. And it acts as a Phoenix Necklace. And on top of all of this, it's actually going to grant you a plus 5% in your strength, attack, and defense bonuses. And it's going to boost all prayer effects, including Smite and Soul Split, by an additional 5%. And this thing is known for increasing max hit capability by plus three or plus four on top of what it's already capped at this thing is probably the most strongest overpower pet you can get definitely going in the s tier the baby bork pet is going to grant you a plus 15 percent in your strength bonus and a plus 10 percent in your accuracy bonus only in the event that you're wearing a two-handed weapon this pet has been pretty insane and pretty strong from what i've seen in almost every single pking scenario you can think of but obviously it does have that limitation of being two-handed weapons so it was going to be an S tier weapon and comparable to the Archaic Worm pet, however I'm going to go ahead and bump it down to an A, only because of the fact that you have to have a two handed weapon in order for this pet to even be useful. The Balanced Spirit Pet is basically going to be all three spirit pets in one. It's going to grant you plus 5 health every 30 seconds, plus 5 prayer every 30 seconds, and it's going to give you plus 10% special attack every 30 seconds, and also grant Venom Immunity and plus 20 run every 10 seconds. Pretty unique pet. I love using it, especially if you're just going to drop it or use it as a primary pet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it more so into the C category, as there's not really much damage potential you can do with it, and it's not the most powerful pet in the world but it is one of the more useful ones definitely deserving of the c category because it's not anything worse than that 
Oh man, the Berserk Phoenix pet. This is going to be a Berserker pet 10% strength boost and a Phoenix pet 10% range accuracy boost into one pet and it's also going to grant you plus 15 in your range strength attributes. Oh my goodness, this pet is so freaking strong and the fact that you can have a duo between melee and range, it makes it one of the more overpowered pets for Edgeville PKing. Definitely S tier and one of my favorites to use. Moving on to the Berserker pet, we are going to have a plus 10% boost in your strength. Now, it's not that this is a bad pet, but when compared to all the other pets in the game, it's not going to be the more, you know, better of the pets. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the D category, and I'm probably going to get killed for that, but it's just really not that useful when you look at all the other pets that we have. The Blood Hydra pet is going to have a random chance to inflict both Hydra disease and lightning damage. Um, it's really not that great. I've tested out the Blood Hydra pet many times on many videos and I've asked for it to be buffed, but it just doesn't seem to be cutting it. I'm honestly going to have to put the Blood Hydra pet. Out of all the pets that I'm seeing on this list, you know, I can think of a few F tier categories. I'm going to put it in the D section. It's just not that good. The Blood Lord pet is going to grant you a plus 15% in your magic accuracy bonuses. This pet was extremely overpowered and strong back in the day, but now it's just not being able to compete with all the other pets. I'm going to have to go ahead and put this into the F category. The Blood Phoenix pet is going to grant you a plus 15% bonus in your range accuracy, and range is already pretty powerful and accurate as it is on spawn PK, but it's not going to bump it all the way up to the C category. It's going right into the D category alongside the Berserker pet. Pretty amazing though how you put two D category pets together and you get an S category pet. Alright, so the Blood Reaper pet, this thing is going to give you plus 30 in your stab, slash, and crush bonus, and it's going to grant you 10 in your strength bonus, and it increases damage and accuracy the lower your HP is, but enemies are going to deal 5% more to you. This thing is actually a double-edged sword basically, but man, I've seen what this pet can actually do, and it's pretty damn powerful to be honest with you. I'm going to put it more so in the B category, mainly because of the fact that all the overpowered freaking stats that this thing actually actually grants you right off the jump. Um, the Blood Wolper Tanger. Yeah, this is basically a giant Wolper minus the Phoenix pet built into it. It's basically the Blood Lord pet and then also the Wolper Tanger pet, which we're going to get into built into one. This pet's pretty rare, but it's not worth anything. It's absolute trash. I'm going to have to put it into the F category, mainly because of the fact that it was poorly executed when it released on the update, and I have no idea what they were thinking when that pet came out with that specific effect. I would love to see it get a rework of some sort. Blood Worm Pet we specifically talked about with the Archaic Worm Pet with the 5% in your range, attack, and strength bonus. Um gonna go ahead and probably slap it more so into the B category. I would put it in the A category but it doesn't really serve that much usefulness because it's kind of rare and you're not gonna find it as often. Like I'm pretty sure you have a better chance of finding an archaic worm than you do at finding a blood worm pet right off the jump. The Bone Guard pet is only useful for finding treasures, really nothing too special about it, and when it does have the chance of finding treasures, it's really not that significant. It's going into the F tier. This one's a phoenix pet and an alien pet built in together. Um, a tier pet, D tier pet, put it into one and you're probably still working with the D tier. It's just really not that special. I was leaning more towards C but it doesn't really have that much of a power up in terms of how much damage you can do or its accuracy so it's just basically a phoenix pet with the ability to teleport. The Celestial Yoshi Pet, so everybody knows that the Yoshi Pet is going to auto grab your loot and send it to your bank, an extremely overpowered thing especially for PBMers. Well this thing is going to allow you to teleport like the Alien Pet as well and send your loot to the freaking bank. I'm going to go ahead and slap this bad boy into the A tier as well, that thing is pretty freaking sick. Hellhound Pet, 10% um, in your defense bonus, yeah, straight to the F tier. Charmed Alien Pet is going to be an Alien Pet and then also a Treasure Fairy Pet which grants you more additional drop rate bonus. Um, for the sake of this video, obviously an Alien Pet is an A tier thing, but Charmed Alien in terms of its role in the economy, rarity, all that kind of stuff, it is going to be an F tier. It's just trash. Like, I know this contradicts everything we're saying since the Alien Pet is automatically A tier, but I just, I'm not going to put every Alien variant into the A tier because the Charmed Alien, well, it's pretty useless. Coming up we have the Corporal Beast pet which is going to grant you a 10% boost in your accuracy. 
nothing too special there probably going to slap it into the F tier category it's probably worse than the Berserker pet not seeing much special about it Corrupt Berserker Pet is a Berserker Pet and the fact that you get to keep one extra item that can really help when it comes to PKing with multiple overpowered stuff. Going into the C category, Death Pet basically allows you to protect with one extra item, probably C category once again. The Divine Hawk Pet, oh my goodness. This thing is going to grant you a plus 45% in your God Spell damage capability, allowing you to hit up to a 76 with Flames of Zamorak in the event that you have the Zamorak Staff imbued and the Toma Fire Eye. Basically, when all these items are used in conjunction with one another, this pet becomes extremely accurate and extremely scary. But not only that, but the charge spell is also increased by 2%. Two minutes, my apologies. For the actual duration, it's the same thing as the Unholy Hawk, but a little bit stronger. This thing is definitely s tier and then the unholy honk is still going to be s tier as well they're literally the same oh my goodness dude yeah these pets are insane the doppelganger pet this pet is basically enchanted by sacrificing mini me pets into the magic chest it's granting a boost to your combat stats to maximum every 10 seconds and it gives you a plus 10 percent defense bonus and plus one item saved on death and it basically has the effect of a mini me as well this thing is definitely going to be in the s tier Ah oh boy, the Eastern Worm Pet. This thing is going to ignore 25% of your enemy's melee defenses, and it also gives a plus 5% in your strength bonus. When this thing was released, it was absolutely broken. Everybody wanted their hands on it. The most strongest pet in the game, hands down. Well, now it's not really the same case, as it got a heavy nerf, but I do still see it being capable of being in the... Mm, I'd probably say C tier category. I don't want to say B tier. It definitely was S tier at one point, but they nerfed it into the ground. Man, it is a really hard decision, to be honest with you, where I want to put it. I'm going to put it in the B tier, mainly because I know it still has some crazy capabilities. The Enchanted Yoshi Pet, obviously, is going to be any kind of Yoshi Pet fusion. It's going into the A tier, as this one was in the A tier, and then obviously the other ones are just as pretty good. Fortune Genie Pet, holy shit, do I even have to talk about this one? Most expensive item in the game, it's a Treasure Fairy Pet and a Genie Pet combined. It's going to grant you plus 15% in your drop rate bonus, times 2 double experience rate, and a 35% chance to double any rare drop. S tier, if you say anything less than an S tier, you're out of your freaking mind. Even if it's only for PVM, it's still insane. The Tusk Frost Jad Pet is going to make your freeze spells last plus 5% longer, giving you the capability of getting a 25 second freeze. Yeah, pretty freaking strong stuff, but not the most insane thing. I'm going to go ahead and probably put it mm, into the D category. It does have some pretty good uses, but not the craziest thing. Genie Pet grants you times 2 experience, but other than that, you won't be using it after you train from a skilled account to your 99s. F tier, but does have its own usefulness. Giant Wolper Pet is the OG pet. It was basically one of the most overpowered pets before all the other ones creeped up on it. It's going to be a Blood Lord pet, a Blood Phoenix pet, and then also a Giant or a Wolper Tinger pet into one. I still think is really strong. I'm putting it into the C tier. The Grand Luck Falcon pet gives you just a fuck ton of luck and good RNG. That's basically the simplest way I can put it. I'll leave a link to the description if you guys want to see what it actually does on the update thread. But I'm probably going to go ahead and put this bad boy mm, into the B category. It's really insane for RNG, but it's nothing too crazy. Haunted Hellhound Pet basically increases your damage on your vengeances. Pretty cool, to be honest with you, but nothing too special. Going into the F tier, unfortunately. The Hell Spirit Pet gives you plus 5 health every 30 seconds. Nothing too crazy. It's going into the F tier. Um, is there a way I can, like, increase the sizes? No, what did I just do? Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, no, I need to adjust these sizes probably. I'm running low on the F tier space. Holy Alien Pet does have a smiting capability, can't sleep on it, Alien Pet is in the A tier. I'm gonna go ahead and put this bad boy into the A tier as well. Believe it or not, I do believe in this pet being pretty darn good. Holy Berserker Pet is a Berserker Pet plus the smiting attribute. It's going to basically smite your opponent a fuck ton, definitely going into the A category as well. Holy Corporal B, same thing but accuracy, putting it into the... A category as well. I believe they're pretty appropriate there. 
Holy Phoenix, unfortunately, is not the same. I'm going to have to put that bad boy into the C category. Even though it's basically the range variant of these two, it just did not turn out the way I wanted it to. It's pretty fucking bad. Infernal Death Pet is a Phoenix Pet plus A plus one on death. Probably going to slide it up to the C category. Infernal Yoshi, range plus Yoshi. Never saw much use out of it. D Pet. The Jungle Dragon Pet increases your Venom Cap to 25, but it doesn't really have many perks after that. It's going to be in the F tier, unfortunately. The Maiden Pet is just basically a fuck ton of healing on pawn of the damage that you deal. Uh, it's pretty cool, very nice, but not much uses. It's going into the D tier. Mini Me Pet is basically going to soak some damage and give you some defense. Going to put it into the C tier as well. Mystic Dragon Pet, oh my goodness, these spells are going to ignore 35% of enemy magic defense and the spells have a 25% chance to ignore magic protection prayer. This pet's pretty fucking badass, it's going straight into the B tier category. What could possibly get better than that? Add the Jad Pet's effect where you get plus 5 to your spell being longer on the freezes and well, you have yourself an A tier pet. <laughs> Nocturnal Guardian, pretty darn useless, D tier, it's basically the same thing as an Ancient Guardian, but you get to pr pr protect one more item. Knock Yoshi, protect one item while PVMing, and then also having your item sent straight to the bank. I'm going to put that in a C tier. These spider pets are literally theater of blood only, they deal extra damage to the respective spider. You can't even use it against every other spider. I just want to slap these bad boys all into the F tier. Just get in there, get in there, and get in there. These things are garbage. Oh my goodness, dude. The omelet pet definitely has potential, but it is outshined by Vasa. Put that bad boy into the D tier category, nothing too crazy. The Spastillion Bloat pet is going to soak incoming damage by 15% and stacks with a Den's Bulwark, and it allows the Den's Bulwark to soak magic damage and it gives you plus 25% damage in the Bloat's Lair. Pretty good, but it's really much of a defensive pet. It's probably one of the more better defensive pets in the game, but it's only going to be in the C tier, but I had a really fun time using it. Prayer Spirit is basically the same thing as Hell Spirit before your prayer, nothing really good there. In fact, all the spirit pets are pretty much F tier except for the special spirit, which I'll put in the D tier. I feel like the Ripper Demon pet had potential but failed us ultimately. It needs a fusion of some sort. I was thinking you fuse this and the Hydra pet together, but it's ultimately going to be a D tier category. Shade Genie Pet, don't even need to say it, it's going to be S tier category. Protect more items on death times two more than you're normally supposed to? Fucking hell, dude. So fucking broken. Shadow Pet's basically a doppelganger pet without the plus 10% effect on the max stats, so yeah, that's basically just going to be A tier. Scotizo pet, you guys have no idea. Oh my god, everybody sleeps on this pet. It has the capability. You see all these pets here on this tier list? Yeah, well the Scotizo pet can actually disable that for 30 seconds, and then I believe it has a 60 second cooldown or something like that, but other clan members can actually use the Scotizo pets back to back on top of yours. There's so many endless possibilities what you can do with Scotizo pet. You can prevent people from alienating out if you're really good with your timing. This pet's just fucking great. I'm literally going to have to put this bad boy into the A tier category. Solar Calf Pet let us down tremendously. Um, yeah, no, I'm just not a fan of it. F tier. Tecton Pet, pretty decent for PBMing. I'll put it in a C tier. Tectonic Fairy Pet gets even better. B tier. Fairy Pet, it's going to be in the C tier. Now, I'm not going to go through every single effect, but most people are going to know what these things are. If you guys would like to see what every effect does, I will leave a link in the description to an official guide on every pet made in the game by Kelitha, an ex-staff member who we greatly appreciate so much. The Vasa Nisterio pet is going to boost your magic level by plus 10 levels, and it grants a plus 5 max hit to any spells, which is both auto cast and staff spells, and it grants the user magic overload, which gives an additional magic damage based on your target's magic level, and then obviously plus 25% whilst in the Vasa Nisterio layer. This thing is really fucking fun to use and very strong. I was right up there with the, archaic, um, the Arcane Demon pet, so that's going to be in the B tier slot. The Verzik pet basically is the same thing as the Holy Corp, Holy Berserker, and Holy Phoenix. It's better than the Holy Phoenix, but it doesn't have those attributes that the Holy Berserker and the Holy Corp does. It's going into the B tier category. 
The Vespula pet was actually really good, but then they made it pretty trash when they nerfed it. It grants the user's amenity to Venom, Poison, and Hydra's Disease, and all outgoing Venom, Poison, and Hydra Disease damage that you deal is actually going to heal you, and outgoing Venom has a 35% chance of doing double damage. It was really fucking strong when it was always double damage, but now that it's not double damage, and this pet's fucking useless. Obviously, it's going at the 25% into Vassalaire. It's going into the D tier. It's just trash. If it did the double Venom damage, however, it could go all the way up to the C tier and maybe even B tier if you're really smart. The Vigorous Hydra is going to basically have a Hydra pet and a Hell Spirit pet into one, and then the Hydra's Lightning Strike will heal you for the damage dealt. Still pretty fucking useless. It needs a heavy buff, Ryan, D tier category. <laughs> Verdescent Fairy pet, definitely going into the bad boy of the S tier. Verdescent Tecton pet is going to be in the B tier. Death pet plus Alien, I'll give it a B tier. Vorkaf pet, not the best. D tier. Wolpertinger, F tier. Zarpa's pet is actually not too bad. I'm going to put that bad boy into C tier. Yoshi pet is obviously going to be in the A tier. And then just for fun, I did add in the Yoshi Ganger pet, which is a Yoshi and a Doppelganger pet. Only one in the game as the Eco Holder dumped a fuck ton of money to get it. S tier category. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you made it all the way to the end, I want to go ahead and give you guys a chance at walking away with some bank loot. I'm going to be giving away $300 bonds to three lucky winners. These currently go in the economy for over 500 bill in the game right now. So if you guys would like to enter this giveaway, all you have to do is be subscribed to my channel, like the video, and comment your in-game username. This $10 bond is going to go to the first non-edited IGN comment that has the word tier in it. That is going to be the secret word, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.